All right, another question about enlightened masters. <laughs> Can enlightened masters get sick? All right, so for me, when I first heard this question, I was puzzled. Where does this idea come from that enlightened masters never get sick? Okay, ah, now I understand. Because if enlightened master is pure, if they have worked out all their karmas, then they're pure, clean energy. So, you know, if, if they have no possibility of psychosomatic illness. Because some people say all illnesses start in the mind, or, or all illnesses start in the aura. Now, if an enlightened master has cleaned all the bodies of their aura, if they've cleaned their mind completely, they're free of all their karmas, they should never get sick. All right? But, you know, people have cold, influenza, COVID. <laughs> it's, there are uh, measles, chicken pox. There are infections that go around in the air. So I can say that perhaps an enlightened master has no psychosomatic cause of illness. Perhaps. I'm not 100% sure. Perhaps they have no reason to be psychologically sick. Uh, no psychological reason to be physically sick. But perhaps there are just infections in the air. And that if, if someone with COVID comes and sits at the feet of uh, a master who didn't have COVID, maybe it will be transmitted. Right? Um, it's just physical. Uh, another reason is genetic. Because the body... We got our body from our mother and our father, from their chromosomes, from their DNA. And, you know, there are diseases that go down through generations. So it could be that this body, I was born into this body, okay, and I inherited cancer because it's in the ancestry, because there's some fault in the DNA. But, you know, there's some other people who say, no, enlightened master, enlightened soul, would choose parents who are completely free of illness. Well, that's a romantic, spiritual romantic illusion, if I've ever heard one. You know, hum <laughs> humans have a real body. There are illnesses. There is genetics. Scientists can tell you this. Biologists can tell you this. So, come on, wake up. Realize modern medicine is not just nonsense. Genetics are real at least on the physical level. So, I think this is a spiritual illusion to think that, uh, or spiritual belief that masters have no illness. So let's look at the reality. Do we know any master that has never been ill? I can't think of any. Krishnamurti would often talk about that he would have... Um, it's like not migraines, but like it's something like a migraine. It would come every few years. But he understood it to be part of his spiritual development. And that perhaps brings up another possibility that there are spiritual diseases that as the, the brain is trying to accommodate this new spiritual state, it, it has to transform. Now, again, we haven't done brain scans of enlightened masters. Maybe in the future we'll have enough enlightened masters to say, please go and sit in the MRI scan and we can check your brain. Maybe we'll find something. Um, so there might be, we don't know, might be the spiritual reasons why a master might have some physical reaction to their enlightenment. Osho, for one, um, was often very sick in the last years of his life. But if you've heard the concept of the three gunas, right? Now, this is uh, a Hindu Upanishad, I think, uh, concept that there are three energies that, uh, like, we can say they are the passive, active, and neutral forces. I often mention it. So, guna is another version of this trinity of energies. And some masters only live on one guna, one energy. Some other masters have all three at the same time. But Osho passed through three stages. 
in his early childhood, he was in the tamas guna, uh, very passive. He was very lazy, just sitting, doing nothing. His family would just like look around. He's sitting there. Oh, he's no one. He won't do anything. Just ignore him. Uh, he would lie down. He would sleep for, for a long time. He was very, very lazy. But he still was doing meditations, like darkness meditation, which is the perfect meditation for Tamaskuna. Then he went into the Rajaskuna, the active force. And then he was running every day, 10 kilometers or something. Uh, and he was very fiery. And people, then he was beginning to teach. He was going around India, teaching meditation camps himself, creating new meditations. And people, and you can see photos of him bare chested, only in lungi, loincloth. And he was like radiating fiery energy all the time. Then around about 1974, when Osho moved to Pune and created his first ashram, his first commune, he went into the third guna, the sattva guna. Sattva is like grace, blessings. It's, it's more like moonlight. Rajas is more like fire or the sun. Sattva is more gentle. And so that, but he was much more delicate physically. He, um, you know, to go and sit in his presence, like when I wanted to take sannyas, I, you know, they were smelling my clothes. And the first day, they said there's some smell of washing powder in my robe. So I, my uh, date was cancelled and I had to go back a week later. So um, the hair was always smelled. So Usha was quite allergic to smells. Now, maybe some of you, if you've been meditating for longer, you, you realise that you're becoming more sensitive. You're becoming a, a hypersensitive person especially if you become vegetarian, which I hope you do, because vegetarianism helps clean out. So if, but it's not a moral, it's not a should, it's not you must. It's just beneficial for the development of your sensitivity and the development of your consciousness that we don't smoke, we don't eat meat, maybe alcohol also drops away, but all these things that keep you more <laughs> in the physical body, pull your energy down. Um, so I've experienced it. I've known, I had a phase for some years where I was so sensitive, I couldn't walk past a butcher shop. I couldn't go into some supermarkets where they're selling fish or meat. Uh, like the smell is, ugh. or if I went into an elevator, a lift, with someone who had eaten sausages, I would feel nauseous. Just the smell of the sweat of this person who's eating a sausage oh, makes me feel sick. And it became so sensitive. Actually, it was not very practical to, <laughs> to live in this material world where everyone is smoking and eating meat. So it's part of our process of developing our sensitivity uh, which supports our meditation, that we become so sensitive. Um, but as Osho explained it, and probably he's right, that when we meditate, our consciousness goes upwards, like the concept of the Kundalini. We're not living in the lower chakras anymore. If you're a disciple of an enlightened master, you live at least at the heart chakra. And then being in his presence helps your energy go higher. Meditation helps your energy rise up the seven chakras. But if you eat meat, you're going down to the first chakra. If you smoke cigarettes, it's, you're cutting off all sensitivity. You can't breathe. You can't smell. You're just destroying your own body. You're destroying your sensitivity. So if someone is very deeply in meditation, and an enlightened master who's someone who's living in enlightened consciousness all the time. Their energy is much higher. They're not living at the first chakra, they're living at the highest chakras, or perhaps even beyond. As Osho explained, he said, you know, when he talked to us, he consciously came down from above, down into his fifth chakra, 
so he can talk to us. And then when he was silent again, chum, he's back up there, or he's everywhere or nowhere. But that has a disadvantage of not being so grounded in the physical body. And perhaps you can find the discourse where he talks about that every enlightened master needs to have an anchor to keep them here in this physical world. Uh, so Osho, for example, at chapatis, the Indian bread, I've forgotten, it's like 15 a day, but it's quite a, it's wheat, but it's still, it's quite heavy and it keeps you here. And also Osho sometimes drank milk, also brings, it's good for, maybe good for the body. So at least he had some physical anchor that while his physical body was here, something kept his body and his aura together. But if the energy is very high and the energy is less in the physical body, then the body more easily gets sick. That's why we had to protect his physical health. No smells. Uh, he even one time said to one of the people, people who were channeling his energy, called a medium, one medium who was helping transmit his energy. It's another story. Uh, one medium uh, had gone to eat meat and Osho didn't know it, but he could feel it. This woman who was standing like two, three meters away from him, Osho said he felt sick, nauseous himself because this woman had eaten meat. Right? That's how sensitive meditation can make you be. So if that is the level of sensitivity Osho was living in, it's no wonder that he had so many allergies. He had um, weak heart. He had diabetes. You know, it's and it looks like he died from weak heart. Maybe it was a blood clot from not moving, or maybe it was, as he said, um, the poison that he got when he was in the American jail. American government killed him basically. With there's no hundred percent proof. But we could see that Osho physically was not very strong in the last years of his life because he was in the Sattva Guna. Earlier, he was very strong because he was in the Rajas Guna. Okay?